Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. It's been so long since I've done this, I didn't even know if I would get the intro right, but I remembered it. I've taken a full month off. It has been relaxing, but it has also been a little anxiety provoking. Like, I'm like, you know, like after a while, like you got to get back to work. And this doesn't even feel like work. This is like, you know, like a family reunion, getting back to it, seeing everyone at boot camp. And um, so it's really great to start up with the round table podcasts again and, and the interviews as well. So without further ado, let's go through our round table panel of land geeks. We got Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you? Hey, doing well, everybody. Big roar. Awesome. Jeannie Morham. How are you, Jeannie? Great. Glad to be back. Awesome. Awesome. We've got the new nickname, Eric, the technician Peterson. The nickname is approved and it's, it's good to be back. <laughs> July was a quiet month. It was a quiet month. All right. We'll talk about that. We've got Mimi, the terrorist Hunter wait. Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great, and I had such a great time at boot camp. I've met so many great people. Great. Wait, Scott, what were you going to say? I think you owe someone an apology, Mark. I think that you just skimmed over the chance to do it, too. To Eric? No, 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 no. You know who. You know who we're talking about. Uh-oh. A Eric's proper mom. apology. Yeah. Yes. I, I was going to do that after the intros. Okay. All right. I was going right. to let Eric tell the story. Okay. All right. That's cool. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to derail you. Back, back to the intros. Mimi. Mimi, the terrorist, the terrorist Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> if there's, by the way, Scott, if there's a drone hovering over your house. Not, not my house. It's going to be your house after what you just said. <laughs> That's that's unless that's unless that's Mimi it. and Let me Mrs. Make a phone call real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> Dial one up. You, did you guys see? Yeah, did you guys see that the drone exploded over the Venezuelan president yesterday? Like yeah, an assassination crazy. attempt. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, we've got the Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you post boot camp? Uh, today is full recovery. Yesterday, a little groggy, uh, but we had a red eye, but feeling great, reinvigorated, you know, saw everybody. It was amazing. And I love this time of year because October is like right there. It's going to come quick. It's going to come quick. Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, we've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, <laughs> Tate Litchfield, the Big Papa. What's up, Tate? Not much. Yeah, I'm with Mike. Yesterday was rough. The boot camp hangover. I was exhausted. Feeling much know, better we should, today. We should film like our own little short movie called The Boot Camp Hangover instead of The Hangover. <laughs> it would be we should. Short. Like it would Disney be short. short? Like a Disney short? Wouldn't that be funny? It would, it would be. And like we come home and there's like a pile of mail and offer letters to go through. And, um, you know, suddenly like you can't find your computer. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like that's the thing. And like you're like searching all over town for the computer. <laughs> You end up, you know, getting like a tiger from the zoo and, you know, taking Scott, out. Scott ends up with like a face tattoo. Yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah, Scott, gets, <laughs> Scott, Scott gets like a lanky tattoo. There you go. What yeah. stays at boot camp? What happens at boot camp stays at boot camp. Unless it's a tattoo. Unless it's a tattoo. So, uh, and of course, last but not least, you know him. You love him. He's now, his new nickname is The Brain. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net and modo.com. And most importantly, that automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, are you fully recovered? No, I'm not actually. Uh, I kind of didn't recover yesterday. I just kind of got back at it a little bit. And today, this morning, I felt the pain getting up. So. <laughs> Have a busy day today. A two flight schools. Two flight schools are ending tonight, Mark. Two of them. Wow. So uh, it's it's the we're breaking out the fireworks for two classes tonight. 
Well, those graduates should get on a call with Mike Zeno or Scott Bossman to learn about the next level, Top Gun, and getting their call sign in that advanced group. So the learning, the training continues. It's Kaizen. It's continuous improvement. So uh, for those flight school grads, we still have more training goodness for you. Um, learn more about that and schedule a call. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. You can just scroll down there and, uh, and schedule a call. So let's talk about our biggest boot camp takeaways from the Scottsdale boot camp. So, you know, let's not, let's not, you know, be mean to Bearland because look, you know, you can't make every boot camp. So let's just start with Bearland Aaron about a favorite takeaway from his last boot camp that he attended. Okay. Um, the last one I did was Vegas. And, um, you know, that was the first one I'd gone to with kind of the VIP breakout rooms. And that was pretty special because we got to um, discuss some things at a higher level um, and learn some things that were, you know, the, the main room isn't obviously ready for because a lot of people are just beginning there. Um, so that was, that was a really neat thing. Um, I think we went over uh, some things about swim lanes and some, some uh, things about um, organizing our business and uh, acquisition manager kind of stuff that was really good to hear um, some new information. Um, that was, that was my big takeaway on the last boot camp. Um, it was, um, it was a really good thing and I can't wait for the next one, which I plan on going to, uh, to see, see what kind of nugget I can get from that one. Awesome. Orlando start. It's going to start filling up now. Go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. Start registering. Um, that was awesome. That was awesome. Jeannie Moore, what was your biggest takeaway? This is your first time in the VIP back yeah. room. How was that? That was my favorite was the VIP room. And it was, the, you know what? I really enjoyed listening to Tate and Scott. Um, and Scott actually challenged us when it came to time management. And it was a little rough for me because um, he challenged me to delete my Facebook app. And I did. And I didn't know how addicted I was to Facebook because I was going through withdrawals the whole weekend. And I could see where that's a, a time zapper. And that's where a lot of my time is going. Not on Land Geek, where it should be, you know. So that was great for me to be kind of held accountable. Loved it. And there was a lot yeah. of changes, but that was powerful because I took action and I could feel the pain. And I, um, I had to jump on Facebook before, but um, in the last day or so, but I'm taking it off again. And uh, it, it, good eye opener. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's a great app that we all downloaded called Moment and it tracks it. And after a certain time period of being on your phone, it actually alarms and stops you from going on your phone. Um, that's one of my favorite apps. And like we, Scott and Tay and I were kind of, kind of competing for a while there. Um, you know, we all haven't done our screenshots lately, but I, I, you know, Scott, Tate, I still do it. Are you guys still doing it? I still have mine running. I just, you know, I've gotten to the point where I've eliminated any of those apps that our time sucks for the most part. You know, yeah. Mark, Hey Mark, uh, another yes. thing I wanted to add that I really appreciated about Tate and Scott is they, they were really open in the VIP room, um, sharing their challenges and stories. And I can relate to that because that's how I communicate. So once I understood their challenges, I thought, you know what, I can do this because it was inspirational for me because they're, they're doing really well, but they could relate to us and let us know, hey, we've been where you've been. You just keep doing it. You know, you'll, you'll get there. And they were really encouraging, really powerful. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's a struggle for all of us. Like, like no one rides for free in, in business. And, you know, we all go through it together. Some of us just have gotten sort of immune to it at, at a certain point. Like we're just like, okay, what's today's problem? How are we going to tackle it? Where other people are more shocked by it and it takes them a little bit longer to, you know, maybe solve it or there's more self-doubt there and they still get through it it just probably takes a little bit longer now 
than, than, you know, what Scott and Tate have to go through, but it's always there. Like they don't go away. So, um, that's, that's really good, uh, you know, feedback and, and takeaways. Uh, Eric Peterson, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, I, I feel like I always say this, but, you know, again, just being able to, to see everybody in person um, from all the new people to coaching clients and everybody else, really. I mean, uh, it was the biggest boot camp ever. Um, so it was, it was a pretty special time from, um, you know, that point of view. Uh, on top of that, you know, I think we walked away with some some pretty good ideas of some things we could do to improve boot camp and, um, and make it better for those that come in the future. Yeah, absolutely. We really take to heart those surveys. And in fact, a lot of people from flight school were like, um, the toolkit needs a refresh and that is actually coming this week. So the timing couldn't be better. Um, I'm really excited to, uh, to launch the, the toolkit refresh. Um, now, Eric, you know, in Elite Weekend, you kind of shared something with me. Do you want to tell the story about your mom? <laughs> There's not much of a story there. I, she just, you know, before Elite Weekend, I was, I was with my family. We were up in Wisconsin and, um, you know, they, they live up in Illinois and um, I live in Tennessee. So we don't see each other a lot. And uh, she was just telling me that she listens to our podcasts from time to time to, to hear my voice. And I just, I thought that was kind of funny. And I was just sharing that with you, Mark. And then you got worried because you often give me a hard time on the podcast. And uh, there was a little, I guess, challenge made that, uh, that had one of two outcomes. One was I would come on here and apologize for, or, or just admit that you were right with, with all your comments, Mark, or the other outcome was that you were going to apologize to my mom. So I guess here we are. So I would like to make a formal apology to Mrs. Peterson. And I just want to be completely clear, Mrs. Peterson, your son is an invaluable part of our community and there would be a massive void without him. And, uh, I love, and I kid, I kid because I love, and that's, that's it. So, um, I get it. I can be a little snarky at times with Eric and, um, I'm not going to stop because it's just too much fun. Uh, and look, when you have such a great guy who's so nice, it makes me a little uncomfortable. And this is the way I deal with my, my feeling uncomfortable is I have to kind of, you know, make a little jab now and then. So Eric doesn't take it personally, I hope. And sometimes I'll box him. I'm like, was that too tough? And I will apologize to Eric. And I just want to formally apologize to you. And I'm so glad you actually listened to the podcast. And if you like, you can email me, mark at the land geek.com. Any kind of you know, round table questions. And I'd love to know a little bit more about Eric as a child and we can share some <laughs> childhood stories about Eric and, and, uh, and share that with our community because we all like to get to know him a little bit better. So baby, photos. I hope you, I hope you accept my sincerest apologies. How's that? Excellent. Thank couldn't, you. Have, couldn't have been any better. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I'm you. with Tate. Send some baby photos too. Lots of baby photos. Oh, wait, Mike's. Wait, Joe, Mike, right? That's a great idea. We should have a whole show, but our only images up there are our baby photos. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. That'd be fun. Like, pick out who's who. That'd be great. I like that. No, one, no one's going to recognize Scott with a whole full head of hair. Spice. Oh. Spice. Oh. 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 Mark, I have a question for you. That, see? Yeah, it goes, Eric. Yeah. Mark. Mark, I have a question for you. If I were in a wheelchair, <laughs> would you be making fun of me? <laughs> see, Mark, for those of you that can't see, Mark was just drinking when I said that, and now he just spit <laughs> Basically, he, he is choking on the treadmill. I completely floored him with that comment. I've never seen him speechless. That was he, amazing. He, I here, can't believe he's going there I with me. the mic. Uh, boom, over. Thank you. 
All right, so we're at boot camp, and I live in Scottsdale, and I'm driving. We're driving back and forth from the resort to where we're having the meeting, and I am kind of directionally challenged, but Scott's not, and he starts telling me how to go where I need to go, and I thought, "Are you kidding me? You live in Tampa, and you're telling me how to go in my own city." <laughs> and uh and then it kind of went from there and i said look and they started making fun of me a little bit and i made that comment like if i were in a wheelchair would you make fun of me because i do feel like i am directionally challenged and then it just came back full circle like a boomerang to the head and i fully apologize scott todd no no it's problem gonna be, this, it's gonna be you know this we're gonna title this this uh podcast the apology podcast Mark apologizes. Mark's apology tour. The apology tour. So um, someone that I don't need to apologize to, Mimi Schmidt. How was, uh, what were your biggest takeaways? I loved your section and Tate went even more in depth with the VIPs on sales and remembering scarcity, urgency, call to action, anchor, the guarantee, um, you know, we've all learned all that stuff, but day in, day out, you kind of forget. And so it was a great refresher. And um, both those sections were really strong. And then I always love the, um, the headings that some of the folks come up with in the group, where the wild things are, right? Uh, all, uh, your exes don't live in Texas. I always get a big kick out of some of these things, out of those, some of those headlines, but... That's, yeah, that's one, one, of the past, one of the past boot camps was, I like big lots and I cannot lie. I love it. Oops. Creative people. That was great. Uh, yeah, so it's funny because uh, one of our coaching clients put in base camp one of their takeaways because they're in the VIP room and Scott gave them like just this very subtle close to get the down payment. Scott, do you want to tell them what you said? Well, basically, the, the situation was that um, you this know, is Team one Armenia. The, one of the things that we do in the um, in the advanced room there, the VIP room, is we kind of go around and we kind of look at at areas like if you could solve one problem, what would it be right now? And uh, you know, essentially, what the Armenia said was that, hey, you know, we we lose our buyers. Like you know, we we send them the the Geek Pay link, and then we lose our buyers. And we can't seem to get them back. And then at one point, I'm just like, boom. We asked our buyers, do you want to pay Visa, MasterCard, Discover American Express? And then we take down the buyer's information. That's it. That's all you got to do. And that, they were absolutely floored by that. They couldn't believe that it was just like, like that. And he, he smiled. He's like, man, it's just that simple, huh? And so essentially what happened was he went back and uh, he had a sales call yesterday. And instead of sending them the link and saying, hey, you know, go, you know, go, go do the link. Basically, what he did was he, um, he asked them, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. And they, gave, they pulled over and they gave him the credit card right away. And uh, he, he was just like blown away. Boom. Problem solved. So, you know, lot, really cool to see someone put that into place. And that's kind of like my key takeaway is the fact that, you know, it only takes literally one thing, like one Aaron referred to as a nugget, right? Like one nugget, one piece, one little thing. You do that and you, you get that takeaway and it literally pays for the entire trip. Just that one thing, you know, the, the Armenians, uh, like, I don't know what, what their trip costs. I don't know anything about that. All I can tell you is that if they just keep repeating that thing, their, their trip was free. It, it paid for it with just that one thing as opposed to just struggling. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, I think their trip wasn't as, as easy as other people. They're coming from Connecticut. So that's a, that's a, a big time flight uh, for those East coast people. Yeah. Um, it's de definitely like uh, rough Mark. We're definitely rough. Whatever <laughs> you get, you get there early. <laughs> You know, you're, you're by the pool. You're hanging out with your daughter. Mimi got there like a week early. She's making it a vacation. I have no sympathy for East Coast people. All five of us. 
Yeah. I mean, come on. So big Papa, how about your takeaways? You know, boot camp's always amazing. It's, it's all, there's always something that sticks out to me. Uh, one of the things that, you know, kind of, kind of going along the lines, of what Eric said is it's always fun to just go and, and eat, spend the weekend with people who share your same vision and same goals. And so that's always inspiring. And then the thing that I love about most about boot camp is all the sales that happen in the days following boot camp, right? The Armenia's had some, um, Eric had two yesterday. So, and, and I know uh, a few other people have had like kind of post boot camp sales. So that's one of the reasons I love going to boot camp because we either sell something during boot camp or we sell a handful of properties after it. And I think it's just that motivation, right? You go, you get your batteries recharged, you apply those nuggets and you know, you capitalize on the energy that you've just gained. It's really awesome. So I love boot camp. Yeah, for the for the boot camp attendees, we can call it the boot camp bump. And oh, yeah. like, you know, and like make a little short out of that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so that'll be like the sequel to the hangover. The boot camp bump. The boot camp bump. Uh, Zen Master. How about your <laughs> yes. takeaways? Well, first of all, mid just... <laughs> coffee drink. Is that bulletproof coffee? No, no, I don't. Well, we, Laura and I actually went on, uh, let's see, our last meal was Sunday at ten, uh, four o'clock your time, and we didn't eat again till today. We did a nice little fast after boot camp. And I know Scott and I had this conversation, but he's tired because of the time change. And he was telling me there's no such thing as the time change, but that's why he's tired. But I don't no, wanna... I'm not tired because of the time change, Mike. <laughs> no. There is no such thing as a time change. Oh, there we go. He was mentally getting it by head. All right. No, I, was, I didn't get enough sleep. I was exhausted, uh, you know, okay. one down. But no, actually, is- I will say that even though I'm making fun of you, it was a reframing moment because, and, and I'm poking fun at him because it was actually true what he was saying. I was talking about the time, Jane. It's not the, he's like, Mike. And really, what he was saying was more Zen than me. It was like, the time is what it is, right? He was just, it was actually, although I make fun of you, Scott, uh, look, I'm looking at you like you can see me looking at you over here. But uh, although I make fun of you, that it was actually a very good uh, point, And uh, I thought that was excellent. So, and I, my takeaway, other than that fantastic uh, dinner uh, topic, was um, I think the magic of our business is conveyed in stories. And one of the best stories they are, honestly, Mimi, yours was raw and uncut. And I think it was incredible. I know that uh, I've talked to several people that it, that resonated with them. And I know that it was a little bit difficult because it was emotional, but you should know that that really impacted a lot of people and they were really taken back. And we do that grill the geeks and you hear people go up there and they convey their story. Well, somebody may not relate to me or somebody else, but they'll relate to that individual up there because everybody's different. And that is so powerful. The people came there and the magic of our business was conveyed and the success of people who've already gone through the struggles. And I think that's magical. And uh, that raw and uncut one you did, Mimi, was awesome. It was phenomenal. Thank you. That was actually life-changing for people because people were motivated by that to take action and, and, and develop their businesses higher. So very good. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit it. I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm getting gooseies just thinking about it. And um, awesome. no, it, it's, it was really powerful. And um, we're, we are going to devote a full podcast just to Mimi and her story and her journey to, uh, to where she is now. Um, so everybody can hear it and, and just, you know, kind of devote one podcast to that. And, and people love those podcasts too. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Hey, Mark. Like, yeah, Mark, Jeannie, go ahead. Um, for our listening audience, could you just kind of summarize or give us a little taste of what that podcast would be like, um, Mimi's story? Can you just give us like a nugget of what happened in her story? Yeah, Mimi, do you want to tell us? Just, just one nugget? Well, uh, part of it is, is I've made some really good, dumb mistakes and learned that as much as we worry about not making mistakes, that when we do, that they're overcomable. And then um, for all the folks that work and are commuting and listening to Finding Mark through podcasts, um, uh, you know, and you drive to work every day, dream, listening to that podcast and thinking, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do this. There is another side of it. There is another side of it. So does that work? That's great. That's great. 
Yeah, you get to you get to a good side where you're not in pain wishing you weren't commuting to work and where you're actually loving your job and working in the business every day. So, but you know, it, it takes hard, a lot of hard work. So I guess those are the, the big takeaways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Mimi's living proof of that, of that Zig Ziglar quote. If you'll do for the next three to five years, what other people won't do, you'll be able to do for the rest of your life, what other people can't do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really powerful. So I'm really excited for that podcast where, you know, Mimi opens the kimono and tells us the full story. So it'll be exciting. Um, let's move on to our, our last topic because I know Tate's got a, got a hard stop, which I think is so pretentious, by the way. I got a hard stop. Oh, really? I love that expression. <laughs> I know you're Tate. I learned it from you, Mark. You're the one who, I never even heard of that phrase until I, know. Until I started hard hanging stop. out with you. It's like, hard stop. You That's so me true. That. I want to so apologize true. to Tate Litchfield <laughs> for calling him pretentious when he's using my pretentious terms. So that's my third apology for the podcast. The podcast. Who haven't you uh, apologized to yet? We got, I guess we got to keep going until we're done there. <laughs> Two more to go. Yeah, I want to apologize to Bearland Aaron for the constant. No, you don't. Uh, <laughs> subtle references. To him, oh, you know. In how about we came up with a new? How about a new term for Uber out where you are? Thumb. Thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going with a carrot. Hey, you oh, know. carrot! Even better, <laughs> carrot. <laughs> I just, I just read an article. A, an Amish guy is doing his own Uber. He drives through town and like you have to like whistle him down and he'll give you a ride for five bucks. I swear. Float the, carrot. The, I never, I swear. Float the carrot. Oh my that, god. That is priceless. God. That is priceless. And and he can't even go on TV and be like, hey, we hired a new CEO and um we've really changed the culture of our of our company. <laughs> Because you know the horses before were a little gassy, and and now they're not. You know, so it's it's a way more pleasant experience. Um, all right, it's August, and this is typically the slowest month of the year. How are you going to prepare for the inevitable sales slump? It's back to school for a lot of people. I'm, my kids are back to school today, um, so a lot of people just aren't focused on buying land in August for a variety of, of reasons. Um, how do you handle the sales slump, Bearland Aaron? Well, we're, our inventory is a little bit low right now anyway. Um, so what we're doing is increasing our mailings. Um, I've actually doubled, added a county and doubled our output of mailings. So, um, you know, hopefully by increasing the inventory, I can just give more choice of, you know, offerings to put out there um, to catch that person that's looking for that, that one thing, you know, because obviously if your inventory is a little bit low, you're limited on what, what you're putting out there and you're putting the same stuff all the time. And, and uh, it's a little bit harder to catch, you know, that one person that's looking for that one thing at that precise moment. So the more offerings we can put out there, uh, you know, it's just going to lead to a little increase, hopefully, in sales. Um, and that will also propel us well into the fall, um, you know, kind of getting getting ready to get into there. And hopefully we can get some momentum with that. So uh, doing it as a lead measure, I guess, you know, by putting the mailings out, the thing, one of the things I can control. So that is what we're doing. I love it. I love it. Jeannie, how about you? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, you know what? I haven't really noticed a slump. I actually, we're buying some property. I have five pieces of property I'm buying today. So once we get done today, I'm writing checks. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I just got to be marketing better. because That's what I need to be doing. So um, we, just, we just kept going and mailing. I, I, you know, I re-listened to Flight School. You know, Scott's um, Flight School. And I uh, watched those videos again. And I got that mailing drilled in my head. I mean, it's just mail, 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 mail. I don't care what type of season, what season we're in, just mail. Yeah, it's, it's really great advice. It really is. Uh, Eric, the technician, Peterson, how about you? 
Um, I think just hitting all the channels, right, um, for selling. So, I mean, get those Craigslist ads out, be on Land Moto, um, look at other opportunities for selling, consider wholesale. Um, you know, just don't um, limit yourself to any one solution for the sale. Sure, sure. Mimi, how about you? I'm, well, now I have a little more time since I'm doing this full time. I'm going to go into two more counties. One of my counties, I'm fine in the summer. The other one, it's slower. So I'm just uh, expanding. I think more counties helps. Not too many, but another county will help. Um, what's it called? Diversify a little bit. Right, right. Absolutely. Tate. You know, I'm going to say pretty much the same thing as everyone else. Uh, we don't really notice too much of a slowdown. Uh, we just try to keep the machine working at the same steady rate all year down, all year. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty, just keep doing the basics and you'll see pretty much the same results you always want. There's so many people to target. So how many people, I mean, I know you use the, 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 the uh, example of your kids going back to school and other people's kids going back to school, but there's a lot of people who's, who've gone past that point in their life and their kids aren't in school. So I don't know. There's always people buying land. No, absolutely. And that's, that's the, the best attitude to have is that, Hey, this is 365, seven days a week. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to control what I can control and not let the market dictate what's going to happen. And I'm just going to do what I can do. Zen master. How about you? Well, first of all, I think you can treat it like in a macro micro way. If you look at, you know, people often ask, especially at boot camp, you know, they talk about what happened you were around when the economy had a, you know, went, went a little sour. And I think a very good point that I'm listening to you there and, and what you can do in this business, you can always, if you buy right, you can always, um, you know, reduce your terms, your down payment, you can make specials, you can always move land. Uh, I don't think, it's been fairly busy for us. I think about right now in the last few weeks, about seventy thousand dollars in sales we processed, and we have another one pending. So I don't think it's really tremendously slowed down. I just think that uh, I, I think that uh, if it does slow down for you, my new thing is I'm not a sports person, right? Just like we saw some guy in the airport. He was like a Super Bowl guy. I didn't even know who he was. This guy's chewing his ear off, and all these famous people in Arizona. But anyway, what's the race where you hand the baton off? <laughs> Running? Relay. Relay. Really? <laughs> I don't know anything about spin. Tate's laughing. So I'd look at like the bit, like work, if, even if you're in a, if you slow down, we'll work on your process. Like it should be like in your business, like you got the baton, you're walking, you get it to the next guy and it goes, in the, it shouldn't come back, right? It shouldn't go backwards. Like they don't run the, but you don't run one leg of the race, turn around, hand back to the other guy and he runs back over here, right? You go to the next person, the next person. So your team is like that baton, like, you know, handing that baton up. So when you're slow, my new favorite quote, which is going to be in our office soon, I'll be out there maybe next week. It's going to be, hopefully Laura ordered it for me, it's to say deal flow solves everything. So it's like this idea of like you go through the deals and you go through these processes, rinse, repeat. So if you're slow, great, embrace it and work on that. It's a great time because now everybody's not really busy on your team or maybe you don't have someone in a certain spot. Put them in there and get them ready. Um, Scott Todd was giving me an awesome advice. We're talking about how building processes in, in anticipation of growth. And I think that's a great, it's a great opportunity for that to happen right now, right? Build, build your processes in the anticipation because that growth will come. That, that economy will spring back. That this, this little micro slowdown, if you're having it, will change. So that's another thing Scott showed me. See, that's what boot camp's awesome. Little nuggets. Well, let, let's give Scott the last word. And, you know, he's got a few nicknames. He's the mini bat the brain and the human GPS because he told that story about <laughs> how about the nugget, how to, how to get you back to, to, to around Scottsdale. Exactly. It's like a supercomputer. Just yeah, so yeah. everyone knows that was a three mile drive. Yeah, it was Mark. Literally. It was <laughs> literally. This, the stakes are very high. It was, was it Gilligan's like, Island? A three, hour tour? a three mile drive, a three hour tour. It's all the same. <laughs> Yeah, we almost went on a three-hour tour. That's what prompted it. Like, I'm like, where? All of us are like, okay, let's see where he's taking us. And it's like, turn left. And he even doubted. He's like, it's not right. It's not right. No, I know it's not right, Mark. Just turn right here. I got you back. And I, you know what the worst part about it was, Scott? The most humbling part about it is every single time, without fail, Tate chimes in, how did the bus beat us? <laughs> uh, 
like Zaino and Lara getting off and walk into their room before us. Yeah, they beat us. Yeah. Again. I'm using I'm using ways. I don't know. Right. Hey Mark, so the, the the deal is is that um you, you know, like that's the thing is is in the t everything has like a like an ebb and a flow. Like the way think of a wave, right? Like there's there's peaks where the wave is high, there's there's troughs, there's there's all these things, and it happens all the time in every single business. Business is never flat. It's never like consistent month to month. Okay. And it can ne it will never be. Okay. It's not always growing. It's not always going down. There's ups, there's downs. Just think of like that wave, right? The the, the waves on the ocean. Every one of them's a different size, you know, and you're going to have those, I, I call them shoulder periods, right? Like so. You, know, you have a shoulder period, a, a peak, and then another shoulder period. It's the way it always is. And during those shoulder periods, you really need to think about like pulling out all the stops, right? Like that, that is really where you, you've got to be firing on all cylinders. You cannot stop your marketing because that's the time to add more, add more mailing, add more marketing. It's all in the time where it's slower. And once you do this business enough, like long enough, you start to realize like for your business, like, okay, August is a slower month for us, right? Like, that's just the way that it is. It doesn't mean it's a swing and a miss. It, it did the first August for me. But that said, it's not that it's swing, a swing and a miss anymore. It is, it is, they're still there, but you have to hustle. You have to hustle harder. You got, that's, that's when you got to push harder uh, through, those, through those shoulder periods. And then after that, you know, and, and you start to get into your peaks again, it's just like, just like retail, for example, you know, retail stores, they have, they have peak months, then they have shoulder months, you know, like right now that if you're a clother, guess what? You're, you're all in for school shopping. That's just the way that it is. Come September, October, you, you know, it slows down. November, December picks up for the holidays. January might be a little slow back February for, for Valentine's day. It's just the way that it is. So make the most of it be a little bit more aggressive in those months. And then in the other months, you can kind of coast on the marketing while everything else is coming back in again, but don't stop. Absolutely. I mean, I always think of a slump, like, you know, I love basketball. So, you know, Steph Curry could go one for 17. That guy keeps shooting. He won't stop. Right. Baseball players, they're in a slump. What do they do? They keep swinging. They go, they spend extra time doing batting practice and, you know, if there's a sales slump, you just keep doing what you're doing and eventually you'll get out of it. It's when you stop that, you know, you can really get off track. So I thought this was a, a great round table podcast. I mean, before we end, because Tate's got a very pretentious hard stop, we got to head to the technician for his tip of the week. Mrs. Peterson, I hope you're still listening because Eric always has tremendous tips. Even Jot Not Pro wasn't bad. Wow. I am not prepared for a tip of the week today. So let me take a look here and see what I can come up with. I had no warning. What well, isn't it always your turn? Or is it no, Zano's turn? It's not it's turn. always my turn. It's Zano's turn. I got a tip. Is it Zano's turn? It's Zano. Okay. Zano. Mrs. Peterson, it's not Eric's turn, and I, I apologize. Just wanted to rag on him again. <laughs> oh man! I just wanted to use the nickname the technician. Oh, and tip. We're supposed I to have one of that morning before the podcast starts. I apologize again, <laughs> Mike Zana. What's your tip of the week? Oh, is Mike, is know, Mike frozen? He might be. I love this deal. Flow solves everything. Quote. I'm gonna put that up on my board. I'm gonna put it up on my board. Deal flow solves everything. That, that's a great tip of the week. Yeah. Um, so, hey Mark, so I'll give a Mike give a rose and I can. Oh, go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I, uh, I think it was Wayne Gretzky that said you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. You miss 100 percent of the shots so, you don't take. Yep. I like it. So when we're talking about doing those things even when it's slow take those shots because it wasn't if you my way to avoid the tip <laughs> yeah <laughs> i didn't just sign off to avoid the tip i have no idea what happened <laughs> we got you covered my sure yeah. yeah. got it all right well i i had one but yeah, next time yeah. no no go ahead no, you want to save it let's it? hear it yeah let's hear it yeah 
We came I'm from sure it was guys. a quote, and quotes don't really count as tips it's anyway. It's not a so. quote. It's the first time it's not a quote. Okay, okay. I'm excited I about oh. this. But you all may have already seen this, but Mark turned me on to this because my new fascination is Ray Dalio. I think the guy's a modern-day Musashi. Um, he's, on, he's insane. Is, uh, his YouTube 30-minute principles for success is absolutely knock it out of the park. Like, you watch that. You, and you don't have to read the whole book if you don't want to read this huge book. A lot of people say it's you. But this, Mark, that's the one. That, has anybody seen that one? I'll put the link up. It's I, like, I have. It's, it's, a great, it's a great tip. It's a great link. And I, have a, I even have the app on my phone and I watch the videos from time to time. Ray Dalio is the billionaire uh, hedge fund uh, manager of Bridgewater Associates, the largest private hedge fund in the world. And uh, he wrote the book Principles. Uh, and he's just, he's, he's sort of like one of these enlightened business cats, you know, isn't, is that a better, a great way to say it? Yeah. He's like, like, listen, Miyamoto Musashi was this guy that was like undefeated in swordsman in Japan. He sat down at 60 in a cave and wrote those principles for success. And a lot of people, the Book of Five Rings, still relate to that today. When I heard Ray Dalio start talking and he was like, he reached this point in his life, he's going to write his principles. I'm like, this guy's the real modern day Musashi of business. He's amazing. So I don't want to sound overexcited about it, but he's awesome. <laughs> and he's actually the guy that I, I quote in Dirt Rich. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So... He's, he's even in, in the book, Dirt Rich. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash Dirt Rich to get $500 worth of bonuses um, with your uh, investment of the, the book. So it's on Amazon. Um, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the reviews too. We almost have 100 reviews. Um, so it's great. It's been great. So I want to thank everybody uh, for being on the Roundtable Podcast. I especially want to thank the listeners for putting up with um, all the apologies and, uh, and us having a good time. So I hope you're having a good time as well listening to the podcast. You can tell we're having a great time as well. Um, just a reminder that the official Land Geek Motivation Group is uh, now actually like the very similar to the Mastermind Group except free. So you get to listen to our coaching calls for free. That was been a huge upgrade. The toolkit is being upgraded. Be on the lookout for that. We've got Top Gun. Learn more about that at uh, just schedule a call with Mike and Scott. Nightcap is incredible. When's the next nightcap? Uh, Thursday. Thursday night. Thir Thursday night. And so we are just, you know, really um, doing as much as we can to give as much value as we can to help all of you create that passive income so that one day you're going to wake up and your passive income is going to exceed your fixed expenses and you're going to have a new problem. What do I do with my time now? Which is a good problem to have. So I want to thank everybody. And um, you guys ready? One, two, two three. three. Let freedom ring. ring. Um, Did Hope hear that? Did Hope hear that? Hope, oh. Hope was like so proud of her dad, by the way. Oh, yeah, like, it was great to meet her. Oh, didn't realize he was a celebrity, like legit. Like, yeah. Hey, okay, guys, I I'll be the first to share mine here. There you go. There you go. Huh? In, the chat, in the chat, I gave you guys a present. Oh, I'm opening uh, it right now. First, uh. first to submit. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Awesome. Wait a second. Is that an Apple Watch? When you were a baby? No. What's on no. your wrist? I thought Todd would have an Apple Watch before anybody. I yeah. know. <laughs> it does look like an Apple Watch. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's, it looks totally looks like an Apple Watch. That is I'm a visionary. Look at the future. future. Yeah. That is. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. That is great. That's cute. Yeah. That is really cute. All right. So uh, you guys get to throw up your pictures and then we'll have the contest. Okay. Hey, Mark, that might be a good uh, contest for, for uh, boot camp. That would be. That would be. Yeah. Absolutely. How come yours we're, is we're, in black and white, though? Oh, Tate. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Tate, you better start apologizing to my mom before she comes after you, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I had to. I had to. My, my, my wife's uh, nephew... He, uh, at one point he asked, uh, he asked his grandfather, 
on his grandfather's birthday. His grandfather, you know, clearly is not that old, but he says, Grandpa, were you born when Abraham, or were you alive when Abraham Lincoln was the president? He's like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Might as well have just asked that question to you. Oh, I know you're not that old. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the worst is like we're all like all into Ready Player One, and Tate has no idea about any of the references from the eight. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's funny here, Mark, is that we we would actually have pictures from our birth. Tate is probably his his birth pictures probably in Snapchat is already lost. <laughs> They're gone forever. <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> Only good for 24 hours. All right. If you if you want if you want to see Tate's baby pictures, you got to go on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Did you see Mike's? Yeah, the Buddha yeah. baby. The Buddha oh, baby. Zen. Perfect. Tate, you also could have yeah. been on MySpace. MySpace, yeah. MySpace. No, MySpace was yeah. when I was like, I wasn't allowed to have a MySpace account because my parents weren't all on board. Oh. With I think I was like 10 when that came out, Mike. Mike, that looks just like you, man. Yeah. I'd like to make fun of like like Jeannie's baby picture, but you guys see Kurt's arms this weekend? His, <laughs> his biceps are, are bigger than my head. Kurt's like, jacked. And he's like the sweetest guy. What is, he's a lot nicer than I am. Yeah. Yeah. What, what are you feeding that guy, Jeannie? <laughs> protein. That's all he eats is protein. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Tate, I'm gonna go eat from uh, Taj Mahal now. Oh, jeez! I should have stayed. I know, I know. That's why I said that. I'm really not. It's too hot. It really is. It is hot here. Yeah, it's it's too hot, and I'm I'm doing like the ice lattes now. I never had iced coffee. Now I'm like into that, and you know, it's kind of nice. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys and uh, Mrs. Peterson. If you stayed in for the bonus. I just want to apologize again because we really do love Eric. <laughs> I think I think that's a great way to end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>